community college partners from across the state uh, joining us today. So uh, thank you in advance for um, being here for all the participants uh, for being at this advisor forum and a special thank you to um, our panelists. Uh, we appreciate that you are representing Missouri State West Plains, Crowder, the Metropolitan Community College District of, of Kansas City, St. Louis Community College, OTC. Um, thank you so much for being here. We're, we're thrilled to have you. Um, just a couple, a uh, few announcements before I turn it over to Katie Dyer, who has organized uh, this, this particular panel. Um, I did want to mention that the Master Advisor Reception will be our next event that is scheduled on Wednesday, March 24th from 4 to 5 p.m. It will be a virtual reception. Um, President Smart will be giving remarks as well as Dr. Einelig. Uh, Dr. Kelly Wood will also be sharing some thoughts on academic advising. Uh, this reception will celebrate our 2020 award winners, uh, Kimmy Walker from the Academic Advising and Transfer Center, as well as Dr. Gary Mainz from the Department of Chemistry, as well as our 2021 uh, <laughs> award winners. Um, and those winners will be announced tomorrow in Inside Missouri State. So uh, please make plans to join us for the Master Advisor Reception on uh, Wednesday, March 24th. Um, not only are we going to be recognizing the award winners, but we're going to be celebrating uh, excellent advising here at Missouri State University. I also want to mention the day after the master advisor reception, uh, we are going to be having our next advisor form. Uh, so that will be on Thursday, March 25th. And that advisor form, listening like an anthropologist, why deep listening matters for trans allies. Uh, so this is going to be a, a wonderful opportunity to hear from our uh, trans community at Missouri State University as well as in the Springfield area. So please um, make plans to join us for that advisor forum on Thursday, March 25th uh, via Zoom. Um, as you enter uh, the room, please make sure that your mics are muted. Um, and also, uh, if you would like to receive master advisor credit for this advisor form, please make sure that you enter your uh, name and your department in the, in the chat box so you will receive credit. Um, I also do want to mention that this advisor form will be recorded. Uh, it will be posted on our Mo State Advising YouTube channel within a few days. So if you have um, colleagues who you think could benefit uh, from watching this advisor form, again, direct them to the Mo State Advising YouTube channel. And if those individuals who watch the recording would like to receive master advisor credit, they can enter a custom training submission um, by logging in through the Academic Advising and Transfer Center website. So please make sure that your colleagues uh, know about that opportunity. Um, with that being said, I will turn it over to Katie Dyer, who will have the panelists introduce themselves. And again, uh, it looks like we have 73 participants here so far. So thank you for continuing to support the Master Advisor Program through our Advisor Forum Series. Katie? Absolutely. Thank you all for being here, especially to our panelists. We're super excited to hear about your experiences and how we can benefit or how we can assist transfer students moving forward as they transition to Missouri State. Um, this is co-sponsored by the Transfer Advising Committee, and so I'm thankful to all of them as well. So if you all would like to introduce yourselves as you appear on the screen. We can go ahead and get things started. All right, good afternoon. My name is Misha Clancy. I am a student success advisor with St. Louis Community College. Uh, I have been with St. Louis Community College and I'm located at the Merrimack campus. So we have four campuses and I'm located at the Merrimack campus. I've been uh, an advisor here for now 14 uh, years. Um, and then one of the things that she says, kind of what does, what does our role entail? And we assist with guiding students through the enrollment process, uh, planning and creating individual academic plans, and then managing their progress through graduation and transfer. So that's just a little bit about me. Hi, everyone. I'm Cindy Bridges from the Missouri State West Plains campus. 
and um, I am the coordinator of academic advising. And so I work with students all the way from uh, whether they're a prospective student or if they are uh, needing help with the admission process, uh, orientation, uh, registering for classes from their first semester on throughout uh, the whole process through graduation. Um, we do have faculty advisors that help as well, but we have a few uh, professional advisors here in my department, um, which is called ACCESS. Glad to be here today. I apologize. That's my bad. Go ahead. Good Kim. afternoon. Oh, you're good, Ms. Katie. Good afternoon. There are a lot of you here. I'm kind of nervous. Um, my name is Kimberly Madden, and I'm one of the academic advisors at the MCC Longview campus, which is located in Lee Summit, Missouri. We do have six campuses um, and I'm just academic advisor. So based on the campus that you're at, some people at different campuses will just do advising based off of last stu student's last name. Um, at Longview, we do have content areas. So I work with pre-health students and I'm happy to be here. Well, hello everyone, Jamie Stanley, Crowder College. I'm with our Student Success Center and I'm one of the advisors here in our Student Success Center. Um, obviously the main thing that we provide here at Crowder College is uh, academic advisement to our students, whether that be transfer advisement, which is mainly one of my specialty areas, along with helping coordinate uh, campus visits uh, to area four-year partners. Um, we also uh, deal a lot with academic alerts. Um, we are the uh, primary area for our athletes to come and get their advisement. Um, but, you know, we kind of house some other things too. Um, our counseling center, our accessibility office, tutoring takes place down here as well. But my primary responsibility is, is uh, academic advisement. And I've been at Crowder College going on my 22nd year. Um, all but two of those years have been advising um, you know, the college population prior, prior to my 20 years working with the college uh, population when I started with the Upward Bound program. Happy to be here. Hello, I'm Ginger Luke. I work at Ozarks Technical Community College in Springfield. On the screen, you'll see a picture of my little second grader, Spencer. We were supposed to get new portraits uh, a couple weeks ago, but then we had all that snow. So I, uh, I pulled into the casual photo <laughs> vault so you get to see him. Uh, I've been at OTC since 2003. I'm the director of academic advising and um, our advisors here, we all have our own advisee load, but then um, we don't, pardon me, we don't have a, um, required advising at OTC yet. We will someday soon. Um, so we actually see a lot of students, even though students have an assigned advisor somewhere on campus, our office uh, ends up seeing the majority of those students that, that drop in, um, in addition to our own advisee loads. And then we do all the onboarding advising for our students in a group session called STAR. I'm happy to be here. Thank you all so much. So our first question for you all is how should we recruit transfer students from your institution? That's, that's a tough question. Uh, when I saw that, I was like, okay, this, this should be easy. But then I thought about it and I'm like, this is very difficult because uh, in the in the past, we would have our transfer fair students would, would come and be engaged with the different uh, recruiters from the different schools. And, and now that we are in this virtual environment, uh, we have uh, a transferring out website. And so that transferring out website lists the, the transfer guides for the different institutions, as well as any uh, transfer activities that they have going on at their institutions. And so uh, we have a, a admin person who goes in and she updates that website. And so, uh, because we do have caseloads. So a lot of my time this semester has been sending reminders to my caseload uh, that are in that 45 to 60 area to make sure that you pay attention to the transferring out website so that you can participate uh, in transfer events. So that's been um, 
the the I guess the way now is making sure that you make contact with or have contact with our uh, admin person so that she can continually keep your information updated on that website and then as we are driving our caseloads to that site they can see and have opportunity to gain information about your institution but i'm hoping the fall of 21 22 we can be back to some actual physical real connection uh you know and still have opportunities available in the virtual environment for those introverts but definitely have the career fairs available for those extroverts who, who want to have that conversation and connection. For those of uh, those of our friends who are curious, Misha, do you know the name of your admin person who they would want to reach out to? Say that again. The name of your administrative professional they would want to reach out to? Yes, I can put her information in the in the chat box. Thank you. Okay, well, um, I was kind of thinking through uh, what we have done up to this point and listening to Misha, um, I love the idea there of the uh, transferring out web, uh, website there with that information so for various institutions. So that may be something that um, I look into developing, but uh, we have been using um, in the past, um, visits, whether that be in person or uh, virtual. Um, I know Bart Tibbs, you have come down to West Plains campus and visited our IDS 110, um, which is similar to your GEP 101 um, classes. And then also IDS 297, which is our capstone courses for students that are wrapping up their degree program, usually their last semester or two and that's been beneficial to help students make connections with someone on Springfield campus but also um, get them interested early if, if it's within the IDS 110 classes uh, but also maybe answering those um, last questions before applying for admission if they're down there toward the end of their program in the capstone course. Um, we've also had Again, uh, up till now, it had been in-person events from uh, one I can think of as uh, a group of the faculty from various science departments uh, have put on an event here with our uh, faculty where students that are interested in those particular majors could come to an uh, information session and make connections with uh, faculty in those major areas. And I think that that has been um, a successful event and, and helped students who were you know, on the fence about where they might be transferring, maybe make that decision to go to MSU Springfield. Um, we are going to be lucky enough to be getting a full-time career counselor position uh, shortly. And then as part of uh, a shared grant with you all, we have a part-time career counselor position that will be added a little bit later. And so one of the things I would love to see happen is for um, that career counselor and advisement to work with you all to uh, participate in, um, again, whether that's virtual here in the next year or so, and hopefully in person a little later down the road, um, a transfer event, um, kind of a career and transfer uh, fair combined. And so, um, and in that, I, I mean, I would love to have, whether it's just the um, general transfer information booth uh, with maybe Bard and, and some others coming down, or if it is also including some uh, faculty from, uh, various departments, you know, as sometimes students who can make that uh, contact point with with a person in their interest area, um, they may be more inclined to go rather than just making a call or, um, I mean, that does help, trust me. We use the transfer center a lot and look at the uh, find my advisor list of transfer advisors and we get students connected with you all, but, um, 
nothing beats that personal connection, you know? So I think that's, that's kind of some of the things I've been tossing around. I would say for MCC students, um, I just want to thank Bart Tibbs. I know his name will probably come up a lot, but he is our go-to person. If I have a question about anything, we can go to him. He's been fantastic with handoff. And I think I piggyback off Miss Cindy that it's nice to have a soft handoff when they're so used to being with us and they can get everything done in one place. So uh, Bart's one of my favorites. Um, so that's been super helpful for recruiting students. Also, I don't think I've ever had a student say they had a bad experience at Missouri State if they have to come, even if they didn't make the grades or something happens. And so I think you guys already do an amazing job. I would say for MCC, um, at least at the Longview campus, we have weekly meetings that our advisors have. And it's really important that a rep or somebody that can kind of explain some programs meets with advising because we can then really push that. I think that that would be fantastic. I love the block transfer that you guys do, that helps us a lot as well. So I think you guys are already doing a lot of great things, um, but if we'd be able to, as different advising members at each campus, be able to kind of connect with BART or other folks in admissions or other program coordinators, that would be super helpful for us. Wow, it's awesome to see all these great things going on at these other institutions and helping students, man. You guys are all on top of it, that's awesome. Um, uh, some other things that I had that you guys had not touched on, um, you know, Missouri State does a fabulous job of uh, reaching out to us and keeping us update, updated on things. Um, maybe just a couple of things to add. Um, continue Now, this isn't a normal situation, non-pandemic. Uh, continue to send a recruiter um, to our campus on a regular basis. And so, because the key is that relationship building. Um, to make sure that those students are connecting with someone. I mean, for us, it's, you know, Bart and Katie, we, we dealt with both. Uh, both are doing an excellent job, but not just the in-person and through Zoom and those kind of things, but the uh, in-person connections. When we are able to come to campus, look forward to that day. Um, continue to offer uh, transfer focus events and programming to attract and serve potential transfer students. Um, anyone can go on your website, in which I'll say something about the website. It's always has been and still one of the best websites that I have found with informing students on transfer steps, advisement, links to helpful things, whether it be scholarships, things like that. So definitely want to continue to uh, give shout out on that. Um, and then maybe regular contact with prospective students. You know, um, once that student has applied or even thinking about it, you know, start getting that pipeline, um, keep that regular contact. That would definitely think I think would be work work well, especially for our students, because they they are not comfortable with the idea of transfer most of the time. And so once they get that connection, they're gonna their minds are gonna be at ease. They're gonna be a lot less stressed about the uh, about the situation. Um, and again, I go back to that website. It's so nice to be able to look on there when we when we have a student in the office and we can just go right to the resource. Um, and, and use that. And so I also like that idea too about that transferring out website and making those uh, resources available to students as well. I think that would be one thing that we can work together and making sure the information that we're posting for students is the most up to date. That's what I have for that section. At OTC, we are very lucky that we have someone named Don Redman who works on our campus from Missouri State and she's right downstairs from me. So really, I mean, that's the, the, the luxury of being in the same city, but um, Donna is such an amazing resource for our students. Um, and we try to connect our students with her very early on. And so I would say just keeping her informed with um, your information so that she can pass that on to our students. Um, a lot of times when we meet with someone, we send them right downstairs to meet with her and, and they can go ahead and start kind of building that relationship and getting them more connected to Missouri State, even if they're in the first semester. Um, I would also say that connecting with our department chairs would be a really good, I know a lot of departments already do that, but um, you know, some departments have, um, you know, connected with the department chairs and they come in and they guest speak at some of the classes uh, when that's appropriate. And I think that's a really good 
um, way because that's where the students are. OTC is in the middle of a, a big redesign for student success and academic advising. And it's gonna be a couple of years, but it's gonna be so awesome. Uh, at that point, we'll have required advising. Um, our advisors will be more proactive and um, embedded in the different divisions. So I, especially for um, Associate of Arts students in our area, in the future, we'll really be able to, um, you know, pass along your information a lot quicker. We know we'll be meeting with them. It's just a little bit more challenging right now that, um, you know, advising is kind of optional for them. But I'm really, really optimistic and, and really positive about kind of what the future will bring and, and getting them connected to you even earlier in the future. Thank you all. So as we look to make the transition smoother for your students, could you share what kind of common characteristics you see out of your student populations? And I think it might be best if we just go in that same circle. It seems like that's what you all did too. So Misha, if you'd like to start us off, if you're comfortable. Uh, I was, can, can you, give me a little more information about what type of characteristics you were looking for. Yes. So, um, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, thinking about maybe like the demographics of your students okay. as well as things that they're interested in. Um, the type of advising that works best for them, like maybe how you advise specifically your types of students. Okay. Um, things like that, I think would be really helpful. Okay, I got you, Kay. We, we there. Uh, for, for our demographic, uh, the, first of all, the majority of our students are female. Uh, and we still see that that under 21 population. So those right out of high school, we still have a lot of those students because of the A plus programs and things like that, that the, that the state offers. Uh, I do see a climbing demographic of uh, non-traditional students that are probably in that uh, 30, 30 to 40 range. Uh, that demographic is, is starting to grow throughout the community college and so, uh, we do see those. The majority of our students are Associates of Arts General Transfer Studies. Now, even though they are general transfer studies, usually they have a, a interest in something. So it could be psychology or it could be communications or sociology or criminal justice. And so general transfer studies has just been the best uh, way to ensure that they have that core 42 as well as some of those uh, classes that they need for that particular degree program because a lot of times they come in and they are undecided about what it is that they want to study. So having that core 42 and then those 18 hours of whatever their interest area is. Um, so we do have that. We do have a growing population also uh, of individuals who are doing the associates of science. So either in STEM or engineering uh, that has, I've seen those numbers uh, grow as well, especially among that, that probably that 24 to probably 30 where they have done some type of work, they've taken classes in the past, has done some type of work and now has kind of decided that they want to come back uh, and pursue something. And so I have seen the engineering uh, kind of climb. But the majority of our students are general transfer studies. Uh, starting fall, well, fall of 20, we started an Associates of Arts Business Administration degree. So it has that core 42, along with, I think at, at most four-year schools, they have like a, a, the pre-business classes, so like the economics and the accounting that are required for the business major. So that's included in that Associates of Arts uh, business transfer degree. And so we've seen that number go up as well. So we have a lot of students who are pursuing that. And then always ITIS, computer science, information systems, cybersecurity, 
Uh, I don't even know all of the areas, software development. Uh, those areas are also growing, especially with everything moving virtual and, and uh, a lot of companies having a need for that expertise. So we have seen a lot of those programs uh, grow exponentially also. And I think, is that, does that kind of cover, Katie, what? Okay, okay. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. <laughs> okay, well, I will start uh, with some of the characteristics that I see um, in many of our students. Um, a lot of first generation students, um, many uh, lower income, many uh, using A plus while they're here. Um, many are from rural small town areas. And so sometimes transitioning to West Plains campus is a little bit scary for them. Uh, West Plains seems like a big place to them. Um, and then transferring to MSU Springfield sometimes can be, sometimes by that point they're ready, but other times they're still a little bit nervous uh, because to them that's a big city. Uh, and so uh, sometimes they're, they have a little bit of hesitation there. Um, because we're open admission, we see many students who are uh, very academically underprepared, at least when they come to us. Um, hopefully, you know, they are uh, in a better position in that manner uh, when they transition out of MSU West Plains. Um, and then as far as like programs, we have um, still the majority of ours that transfer have the general, um, like the AA general studies transfer degree. Um, but we do have a significant number of students who are doing the associate of science um, in business or in agriculture, uh, because again, uh, they do have uh, the, the core 42 general education requirements built into those degrees. Um, we see uh, many of our students doing the AA teaching degree. Now, having said that, not all of our students who are planning to go on for um, a bachelor's in education, whether that be elementary education, uh, the completion program here on the West Plains campus, or if they're planning to go on for secondary education. Um, we do have many of them do the AA teaching degree, but many of them also choose instead to do the AA general studies degree. So um, other than that, um, we've seen a, a significant number of students who, if they're doing an outreach program, um, it may be in the elementary ed or business or agriculture major, but if they are just looking for a degree that they can complete and not physically transfer to MSU. Um, I've worked with many students over the last year or two who are doing the online psychology program, uh, the professional writing program. And so having, it, it's great to see that list of options for students growing. Every time I look at it, I think there's something new on it. And so, uh, that, that's fantastic. All right, so um, for MCC, we are close to be half and half of female and male. We have a larger population of our 25 to 64, quite a bit more. Average age is around 38. Um, that said, we do still see a large number of A plus students, a large number of Pell students. Um, I would say that a lot of our students, as well as the other folks that I've mentioned, they're on the general associate in arts degree. Um, at MCC, students can earn just their gen ed cert or core 42. Um, a lot of students don't do that just so that they can fit more in with their electives and just get the whole AA. But we do post the, once the AA is posted, you will see the general education certificate that'll be posted on the transcript as well. We do offer three associate in science degrees, biology, chemistry, pre-professional health studies. Um, pre-professional health studies is usually a good match for students that might wanna go to nutrition and dietetics and things like that, but it does not include the core 42. That's why a lot of times we don't have a lot of students that complete it. We do have 
we have students on the ACS, which is the Associate in Computer Science. Um, and then we've got teaching degrees and, and those kind of things that we typically like to work with the program coordinators or faculty, um, just, and obviously with admissions too, just to see even if a student comes in with an AS, would it be advantageous for them to still stay with us and get more genetics done, transfer to you all? We're open to that if, if they we want to get them to uh, Missouri State as quickly as possible uh, and as efficiently as possible. But I would say a lot of our common characteristics too, I think um, somebody else mentioned it before too. I think Mr. Stanley mentioned it before of how they're scared to transfer. So again, I just want to reiterate again, that kind of that handoff to help them understand that it's going to be a little bit more spread out in terms of what they're going to need to do. They always have a lot of questions about financial aid. Um, I'm trying to see, I think somebody asked in the chat about um, how, what advising looked like. I think it was Kristen Thomas. So with your transfer students, you notice that many are considered traditional or non-trad. We do have more non-trad um, who may have other needs to reach us in advising. Yes. And so a lot of them want to know, like they'll ask us, and I'm sure the other folks in the panel can agree. They're like, well, what do I need to finish my uh, pre-physical therapy degree at Missouri State? Like, tell me everything I need when I'm going to graduate. And we're like, well, can't really tell you that. So we just have to make sure we get them in contact with folks. But I think for us, I've worked at a different four-year school and advisors there were kind of harder to reach. Like once you can get to them, it's really great, but they didn't give out their phone numbers and stuff. We are like incredibly accessible, which is a lot sometimes. So I think it's just, they're used to that. They're being able, used to be able to get in to see us at any point in time, even if they don't have an appointment, like all those different kinds of things. So I think that's a common characteristic as well. So aside maybe from some of the particular um, breakdown percentages of our population, I kind of thought more along the, along the lines of the student concern, things like that. And some of you have talked about uh, some of those things already. Again, the intimidation factor by the transfer process. Um, they Our students get very comfortable. I mean, I don't know if some of you know where Crowder College is. We're in Neosho, Missouri, about you know 15 miles south of Joplin. So we're very rural. Um, some of our students come from very small high schools. Um, and so when they come here is a big step and then to go on to the uh, four-year school is a giant step. And so they get very comfortable. <laughs> um, some of the things I wrote, students need guidance, college is new to them. Many of our students have financial need and they appreciate any scholarships that can be afforded to them. Um, even if it's of a couple hundred dollars scholarship per semester can go a long way. Um, however, with that said, I find that our students are very driven, uh, very motivated, but they lack the knowledge um, necessary to prepare for that successful transfer experience. That's where I feel that my job comes into play, as well as the other advisors I work with. And, um, and we coordinate a lot with one of our TRIO programs here on campus, as well as some of the others at some of our other centers. Um, that, is a, that is a big one. Um, and I made a note while you guys were, got the luxury of going forth here in this panel, <laughs> make some other notes as I go along, but um, I did mention the fact about um, the face-to-face -face advisement that someone mentioned, that our students really prefer that. Um, we are not um, opposed to doing Zoom and phone enrollments. <clears throat> I think I've done more Zoom and phone, phone enrollments in the last year I think that I've done almost, it seems like in the entire time I've been advising, but um, they do want that face-to-face. -face. When you think they're gonna want a Zoom or a phone enrollment, which most of what I do is probably phone versus Zoom, but then they'll say, nope, I wanna come in and see you. And I'm like, good deal. You know, I, I need to see you and see how things are going. Um, and then as maybe as far as the characteristics, obviously we have, uh, more associates of arts degrees uh, than we do AS or AAS degrees or AAS would be more of our technical programming and things like that but AS would be our primarily be our nursing and our pre-engineering for the transfer not that we don't have any uh, occupational therapy assistant um, transfers but mostly I deal with the, the pre-engineering um, and our nurses looking for um, bachelors 
but a lot of them have their mind made up almost when they get into our RN program, they already know the online uh, continuation programs that they can um, seek out. Um, but again, probably the biggest things for, probably from Crowder as far as characteristics, you know, first gen students and they are seeking financial aid and scholarships and they really want that to continue if they're going to be successful at the four-year level. Um, OTC, as many of you know, we are a commuter campus, so we do not have residence halls. Um, a lot of our students uh, work uh, full-time outside of school. They have a lot of responsibilities. They have children um, outside of the classroom. Online classes are very popular here. Um, and so I know that that is um, a draw when they think about where they might transfer to is, you know, the um, availability of online classes. Um, the students who do take classes on campus, um, you know, I, what I see here is that we don't, they pretty much come to class and then they leave. We don't have a lot of time spent on the class, on campus. The engagement on campus is not really high. Um, they're here to go to class and then leave because they've got to go to work or they've got to pick their kids up from school. So, um, you know, just really a lot of times, you know, our role is not necessarily um, talking about as much academic support as it is how do you navigate all the stuff in your personal life to help you be successful, get it in a good place so you can be successful as a student. Um, in terms of appointments, phone appointments are actually our most popular. We do Zoom and you know on-campus appointments, but um, phone is is really popular for us right now, more so than Zoom or on-campus appointments. Um, our students uh, like things on demand, and OTC in a lot of ways really uh, caters to that, um, which isn't necessarily a good thing in terms of setting that up for their next institution where you may not be able to walk in and just see someone right away. Um, and so I that would definitely be a culture shift for a lot of our students, the planning piece, uh, scheduling an appointment, and then echoing what the other panelists said just about, you know, what types of financial aid scholarships are going to be available um, at Missouri State for them. Thank you all. So many of the people in this Zoom room are advisors, either staff or faculty, and you all have shared a good bit about some of the intimidation factor and the transfer shock that comes with transferring from one of your institutions. So as advisors, um, how can and should we prepare to help your students as they transition, right? Like what things can we do to kind of soften the blow in an advising standpoint? Uh, for me, and I, I just jotted down some notes, uh, I think that financial aid piece is so important. Uh, when, when, and I, I was even thinking financial aid workshops or financial aid transition workshops or something that they can understand the additional cost uh, and how to lower those costs. Because when you come from the community college that is very reasonably priced, to a four-year institution and you start talking hundreds of dollars per credit hour, uh, that looks totally different. And so I think uh, some of them get scared away when they say, how am I going to pay for it? Uh, the other thing that I noted uh, that for some of them, housing, uh, so they, they say, I'm going to transfer to Missouri State. And I said, that's wonderful. Okay, I can, I can help you get there. That's beautiful. And we get to that year because I start planning a year in advance. So I don't allow them to wait until that last semester. Uh, we start planning a year in advance. So you're going to go to Missouri State. Where are you going to stay? And I always get a look like, what do you mean? Where am I going to stay? I am going to live on campus. I, okay, that's beautiful. And I want you to have that experience. And so let's go to the website and let's look at housing and what it costs for housing. And I think that then they become taken aback, like, oh, okay, it costs to live on campus. Yes, there is a fee associated with staying on campus at that institution. 
Is that a part of my tuition? No, that is not, a, that is in addition to your tuition. So having these kind of conversations with them gives them time to really think about what it means to transfer to a four-year institution and what it means, uh, what that cost is going to look like. So you don't get sticker shock in, in June and July when it's time to really attend that institution, but you know going forward, hey, I need to look for some scholarships. Um, so that housing piece was was one because again we do have traditional students traditional age students and so they want to have that collegiate experience uh and then two just some some workshops uh even if it's some time to start because i don't think every student starts early enough it's never too early to begin transfer and i always tell my caseload you know we need to begin with the end in mind because we want that transfer to be seamless i would love for you to complete the degree but if it's not in your best interest to transfer to that institution at the end of the degree then i want to i want you to transfer when it is best so that you have a seamless transfer process and so i know it's like okay well what about graduation and completion and, but i think if i can get them to the institution at the right time of where they need to be and they have that momentum going things things work out well so i think that's important the other thing is that i really wish there was a loop that could connect uh you all with us to know that okay they have made it there successfully so they are there they're enrolled everything is going well because sometimes it's just like okay what what happened to them and then i may see later oh, okay they did make it okay they did graduate because those two years go quickly you know they they did graduate you know sometimes i wind up and i'm like i'm in a master's program and i'm like what you finished so i think just kind of closing that loop to make sure that they they did get there they did get enrolled in their classes and things like that i think that would be good uh for us to know about that but that's just some of mine so i'm gonna stop and let somebody else take over Well, our situation is kind of unique, I think, because of us being part of the, the same system. Um, what we see sometimes are students who are having difficulty understanding, first of all, that they even need to apply separately to MSU, Springfield campus. Um, and on top of that, the financial aid piece is even more confusing to them because they think, well, you know, I'm I'm here at MSU already. It's just the West Plains campus. So why do I have to apply to the Springfield campus? And why do they have a different FAFSA uh, school code? And and just it, it can get a little bit um, tricky walking them through that process or helping them understand that process. Now we do have uh, again the outreach center here on campus, um, and and the folks there are. are great to help with those questions. But again, sometimes students um, who are wanting to do the outreach programs, whether again, that's uh, a program like elementary ed where they can do that here on our campus or whether it's a, a completely online program, they, they many times are just not understanding that piece about getting admitted uh, separately and, and taking care of all of those pieces separately once they, um, you know, are, are transitioning from the West Plains campus to Springfield campus. Um, so, you know, I, I've kind of thought through this as far as um, we would, and we've talked in some other meetings I've been a part of recently, that we would love to see um, more coordination and cooperation there with, through the outreach center, whether that's through uh, Deanna Smith, who's a facilitator there now, or, you know, that financial aid piece would even be um, if we could do something there where we had, um, like Maisha was saying, the, the workshops or something where maybe whether that's uh, through virtual meetings or whether that is, you know, setting up at some point in the future, um, a representative to come down on campus and invite students to um, a financial aid workshop to help with that transition. I think that that would be very beneficial. 
um, because as some of the others have said, the financial aid piece is huge. Um, if students are not comfortable that um, that is worked out as far as not just covering tuition, but um, you know, as Maisha said, the housing is a, is a huge issue too. Um, not for all of ours that are transferring because many of them uh, either live somewhere between here and Springfield and plan to commute, or they have family that they're going to stay with there in Springfield, um, or maybe they're doing an online program. Um, but the, the financial aid piece is key because if they don't feel comfortable with that piece, they're going to back off many times of that decision to transfer. I think I'll go ahead and turn it over to the next person. So I'll just say it a third time I've ever, <laughs> as we go down. But again, as uh, Ms. Cindy, Ms. Quincy said, like the financial aid, because they're used to getting a refund. They're used to getting like $1,200 back. That's cute. You know, they're ready to have a great time. So it is, it is a, a big difference. So I definitely want to piggyback yet again off of that. I think the second thing is how quickly can they get in touch or in um, connection with their academic advisor or faculty advisor, however that's done at Missouri State. That's going to be really um, important. Um, I think being able to get involved, that'll be easy for them to do at Missouri State, but I think that that's going to be a big piece as well, especially with the Zoomers wanting to be more involved in so many different things, um, with social justice and those kind of things. So I guess just letting them know what kind of exciting things might wait on the other side. Um, I don't know if you guys have a transfer orientation or not. I feel like I should know that, but if you do, a lot of students are really concerned with when can they enroll? Okay, you have priority dates. What does that mean? Do I qualify? Um, so I think that that would be super helpful for them to know as well. Okay, wow, man, this is great. Uh, uh, some things that I had on my side with how, how can how can MSU prepare students? Um, I mean, I'm echoing a lot of things you guys have mentioned. It's like hitting home for sure. Um, and I want to say too, uh, for the for all the participants in this uh, presentation, we do have uh, on-campus housing here at Crowder College. Um, but of course, not all of our students obviously um, take advantage of that when they go on, but many do. And so, but they have to be aware of the changes, maybe different costs, things like that. So we deal with that as well. Um, continue to help make sure that everything's in place. Several have mentioned the financial aid. I can't stress that enough. And I know MSU has streamlined that a little bit to where if they can get admission, I believe by June, uh, June one or somewhere in there, that so if they qualify for those transfer scholarships, you know, they're already uh, ready to go. And so that's making it a lot easier, not a separate um, application per se. Um, continue to inform students about everything that MSU has to offer, but also realize that our students will need the assistance and they may not even know what questions to ask. Um, I find this beneficial when we bring students up and Bart gives the uh, transfer uh, admissions presentation. That's that's the, the big key because he focuses on things that are unique to our students, even and he knows things that are unique to Crowder College students. So if our students are in the room and they realize that someone's going to make a connection with them and focus on things that they're dealing with, that can go a long way and sway a student to make a decision, maybe to attend MSU right there. Um, and then speaking of connections. Um, help make that connection with the department and or advisor and um, helping them to be ready uh, for that first semester. And I realize that not all advisors and all departments are the same. So my, my thing would be if, if we get word of a, of a certain department that maybe a little, what the word, what's the word here, maybe hasn't made that connection yet, some assistance maybe from um, you know, the transfer folks there within admissions can help maybe expedite that. That could ease um, a student's stress level big time. Um, and then once they get into that advisor uh, meeting in, in or and or department, making sure that that degree completion plan is up to date, it's ready to go. So those are some few things that I think can really help our students continue on making that transition. 
Um, for OTC, I think it's really important to communicate with our students about any deadlines, priority deadlines, because it's probably going to be much earlier than what they're accustomed to at OTC, um, especially registration. Um, like I said, our students are kind of used to on-demand <laughs> service, which is a real shock for them when they go elsewhere. So, um, so that it's important for them to know that when you're going to transfer and you need to make that appointment with your advisor there, you need to do that early so that you can get released to register um, or if not, your advisor at Missouri State might be booked out for, for quite a while. Um, and so anything that you can communicate um, to our students about that would be would be really great. Um, also, I mean, if there's opportunities to get them on your campus, I mean, we are just right down the street, but our students are very comfortable here and it's intimidating to go on Missouri State's campus and where do I park and, you know, where's the building? And I think if you can just get them on your campus, if you have an event in your department that they could come to or something just to get them there, I think that that will really help. So it doesn't seem quite as intimidating. Um, and these are obviously conversations that lots of folks at Missouri State and myself have um, on an ongoing basis of how we can, you know, kind of get get students there and kind of um, get over that barrier a little bit. Um, so that's what I would share. Thank you all so much. I want to be mindful of your time. We did have five questions, but I think we're going to do four. Um, thank you all also for answering the chat is things have been coming through. <laughs> I know people are glad to hear answers to those questions that they have also. So we're going to end on this question. Um, what are some of the obstacles you all face advising students in transition? So as you're helping students out of your programs, what are some of the things that are hard for you all <laughs> as you as you advise those students? Uh, I, probably the biggest obstacle that I face is that students don't want to uh, they don't ask the questions that they need to ask to have the answers and it's not because they don't want to ask the questions but they just really don't know what questions to ask and so uh usually i will send them with a list of questions to ask when they meet with their transfer person or when they talk to somebody on the phone that has you know write the name down write the time that you call who you spoke with that kind of thing here are some questions that you can ask if it's not the right department make sure you ask for the department that you need to be transferred to to ask certain questions just to make sure that they are on the right track because a lot of times like like uh jamie said it's it's important that they know okay you can you can really fly i need you to flap your wings you can fly and it's okay Hey, just just go ahead I'm gonna drop you out of the, the the nest you can go and so having that sheet the questions to ask I think it makes it easier for them to see did I do everything that I needed to do in order to to be prepared so they have those questions and so then I'm working with them researching uh, Missouri State and they have been excellent about getting back to me and getting the answers that I need for those students if it's something that they missed on the thing so I think for me that's the hardest part making sure that they have all of the information that they need in order to make that informed decision Well, one of the things that I was thinking about uh, as I was I was looking at these questions, um, and many of, of the others have mentioned too, we have a, a, a population of students who are are here at MSU West Plains, for example, uh, to use A plus. Okay, um, and so we've already mentioned multiple times that financial aid is a big concern for students. For uh, our students, many times it's also a matter of um, timing as far as when when they would be able to transition um whether that's financial and you know there are other parts of their financial life or if it's just family obligations or whatever it might be so the reason i i say all of that is to say uh, sometimes students are reluctant to transfer when they really should transfer <laughs> 
Um, so instead of staying here to get their entire Associate of Arts degree, for instance, um, they want, to, they want to stay here as long as they can to, to get their uh, AA degree, but also to get the maximum benefit out of A+, which I, I understand. But it's difficult for them sometimes to understand um, that for some majors, that could put them behind. Because when they uh, have all of their general education requirements met, and if they're transitioning into a major where um, students for that major really need to get started earlier on classes specific to the major. Uh, <clears throat> they don't want to hear that, you know, they're going to maybe be adding another year to their bachelor's degree because they didn't transfer really when they should. Um, and so working with students through that um, is difficult sometimes and, and getting them in connection with uh, the advisor for that major is, is beneficial many times because uh, they understand then really how that's impacting them. Um, but at other times they simply say, I can't transfer until, you know, after this first two years. And so just helping them understand what that means for them um, is, is very important. And sometimes, um, myself and other advisors here on West Plains campus, whether that's here in my department or faculty advisors, can, um, can help them with that. But sometimes it really takes that connection with their, their transfer advisor to see that full picture and the impact that it could have for them if they, if they stay here and get the full associate's degree. So that's one of the, the things that I would say that's a little bit challenging um, for our students and for us working with them. Um, I would say for myself, the biggest obstacle when advising is when you work at a community college, you have to know how to advise every single thing for every single school. You could have a student come in and say, I want to go to University of Arizona, or I want to go to Missouri State or UMKC. So it's hard to be able to efficiently and accurately advise them. I did see in the chat, Ms. Sidebottom asked about uh, mandatory advising. So at MCC, we kind of do, like if you're a brand new student, you get a hold put on your account um, and you have to see an advisor to create a degree plan before that can be released. Um, but they, oftentimes what happens is they'll, the school will release the hold a few days before enrollment because it was kind of that fear of getting those numbers and things, but um, I, we do have that for our new students coming in. Now, for other students who might be transferring, it's different because that requirement is attached to our first year seminar class. So if a student comes in with 12 credit hours and more than 2.0, they don't have to take that class. So we kind of have it. I guess the answer is no, um, but I, I kind of wish we we did so that we could kind of better prepare. Um, also to add to Ms. Sidebottom's question as well, again, at Longview, we advise by content area. So I think you mentioned business. So we have an advisor that works with business. So he knows about those like eight to nine um, classes or sometimes there can be more or less um, that are for business majors. And so that's what I think is really great about content advising, but not every campus does it that way. So I think that, um, but I, so I can understand concern with that. And I think that kind of goes along with uh, Mr. Kurt's question about advising contacts. I would love to send that to Ms. Katie. Um, because at each campus we have, like all advisors have like our boss, like our student success manager is what they're called. And so uh, I can send those to Ms. Katie and then they can kind of filter that out to each of their teams. And we would love, like, I love working with people in my content, other schools. Like it just, I geek out. I think it's fun to talk about like pre-med stuff and things like that. So I would love to meet with anybody in healthcare. And I know uh, my colleagues as well would love to meet their counterparts just so we can have more synergy and like as Quincy said, like a more seamless transfer, that is like super exciting for us. And also if we have any questions, you can be our go-to folks. So I'll definitely email that to Ms. Katie. So obstacles uh, we are facing. Um, I did notice too in the chat, someone had asked about um, MSU uh, departmental folks getting, or even advisors getting in touch with students early on. Um, I know that's already happened. I think of Angela Plank um, and, and folks alike that have already uh, had reached out and we sometimes will collaborate uh, with them to help our students. So that is going on. 
And as far as Crowder, we really don't have departmental advisors. I mean, we down here in the SSC, there's three of us and we can enroll, advise any student. Once they get into our nursing program, that's kind of done uh, more in-house with the nursing classes. Same thing with our vet tech program, OTA. Um, but basically all the other majors, we pretty much can handle them. So that's kind of a side note there. Um, making sure classes will transfer uh, for particular majors. Um, that's a little tricky. Uh, early on, if a student knows what they wanna do, we can start tailoring their plan here. Let's say if they're a general studies major, I can make sure they're taking electives that, that I think are gonna help them at the next level. Even if, even if some of the classes may not transfer, uh, I can make sure they're taking the right classes to, you know, set them up for success. Um, but usually that's not the case. Usually I can try to find things that are going to help them. Um, sometimes students take classes but are not sure where, they're, where they are going. So certain degrees may require certain prereqs. So the earlier a student knows, I know as advisors, we are talking to students all the time about what's your major? What are you going to transfer in? Or what are you going to major when you transfer? Things like that. And sometimes they don't know to the very end. And you know, they may have changed from education to business. Well, darn it, if I had known you were a business from day one, we could have got your accounting classes, your economic classes out of the way, things like that. Um, you know, financial concerns is an obstacle sometimes because a student could be A+. Plus, and when they go on, you know, to the four-year schools, you know, A+, plus is pretty much done so now they got to rely on scholarships or other types of financial aid if they're not qualifying for Pell Grant that's where the transfer scholarship can be huge hopefully their GPA is good enough um, but they're gonna have to really start looking at other things because all their tuition and common fees um, have been paid um, making that connection with an advisor early is what we advise our students to do um, and then continue that contact with them all the way through their time here and then when they get um, enrolled at uh, MSU. Um, the Probably the biggest question I get is everything will transfer, right? Well, that depends. I mean, core 42, of course, but uh, that comes up a lot. Like, I just wanna make sure all my classes will transfer. But uh, so that's something I'm always dealing with, trying to you know pull up the uh, uh, transfer guide with MSU, making sure showing the students where the classes are gonna meet requirements up there. So that's what I have um, for that section. Um, I would say at OTC, um, the obstacles we face with students in transition are, are frankly the obstacles that we face with them their whole time here. They're not required to see us. So it's just, our obstacles are just getting in touch with them, right? And having them uh, see us as a resource, which uh, a lot of them don't realize, you know, what the value of an academic advisor can mean for them. So they don't understand what the value of a Missouri State Advisor is gonna do for them. Um, you know, so just kind of educating them um, be a great experience uh, advising wise for them um, help you know we have to really help them see the importance of connecting early to their transfer institution as others have said it's never too early to get connected with donna or someone else in their department at missouri state um, so that, that's what i'll say our otc's relationship with missouri state is excellent um, i've had nothing but great experiences with the advisors there um, and, you know, I'm certainly available if anybody wants to reach out to me offline, if they have more questions about our OTC students, I'm happy to help. Thank you. Absolutely. So if, if you all have any questions for the panelists that we did not get to today, please feel free to send them to the UAdvise account. I'm happy to route those um, to our panelists. Thank you so much to all of you for sharing your wisdom and time with us today. I believe that this was beyond beneficial for us as an advising community. And I'm so grateful that you all took the time to spend um, your lunch hour with us on a Monday of the first of the month. So <laughs> thank you all so much. And we will let you go. Um, like I said, I will route any questions from our community to you all. So watch out for some things from me, but I hope you all have a great rest of your week and a wonderful March. <laughs>